Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm sorry for for uh, delaying. We are about. We are going to start now session. We are going to start today's uh, webinar, Sandex webinar, which is called "Using Technology in the Field: Rubber Food Schools." Today, with us, we have a uh, Kimberly Nadori. He's a Scientix uh, Deputy Ambassador in Hungary. And he will be talking today for around 40 minutes, 45 minutes. He, he will explain all, all the topic. And then we'll have 15 minutes for questions. Okay, so uh, you can use the chat. There's a chat option in, the, in WebEx. You can write your questions there, and at the end of the session, you really can go through them and answer them. Okay, so I hope you you will enjoy this webinar. And now I pass the the give or leave the the word. Uh, greetings, everybody. Uh, I know that it is the end of the school year and everybody is really tired and uh, also very busy. So I uh, promise to take you out a bit uh, from the room. We will be talking about uh, how to use technology uh, in field work, how to use technology uh, in the so-called uh, rubber boot schools. Um, why? I think uh, that I can tell you about it. Uh, that's because in my school, uh, AKG in Hungary, uh, these rubber boot schools are part of the uh, curriculum. Uh, every student uh, goes to uh, a school somewhere out in the countryside for five days in every grade between the seventh and tenth grades. So it means they are going to four of these five-day uh, field trips. And uh, on these five days uh, field trips, they are doing uh, research and experimenting um, out in the field. In the seventh grade, it is mainly about uh, introduction to field work and the methods that uh, they can use. In the eighth grade, we have the so-called uh, museum project that I will be talking um, about later. And in the ninth and 10th grade, uh, uh, we have it in a credit-based system, meaning that uh, every day there are a lot of uh, different things that are offered to the students, and they can choose which they want to do and earn credits with that. And uh, later their uh, grade is based on the number of credits that they gathered. Uh, it, it is part of the curriculum uh, in our school which means that uh, uh, they get a grade for that and it, uh, it is a, a part of their final grade uh, at the end of the year. Um, a lot of times when uh, I talk to people about using technology in uh, science education, they have the impression that uh, uh, in some way uh, technology is a substitute for first-hand experience. And uh, they are somehow opposite to each other. What I plan to show you today uh, is that it is the contrary. Technology can really enhance first-hand experience and uh, can make it uh, uh, much easier uh, to work with and make a lot more possible to do. Uh, I will be showing you tools uh, that we use in these field trips, in these rubber boot schools, and also some of the projects uh, that uh, that we are uh, having and doing, and I will be talking about that. There will be a lot of uh, links in the uh, presentation. They are not intended at all for you to write them down or to remember them or anything like that. Uh, I think that uh, uh, the presentation itself will be uh, sent to the participants, so you can use it uh, to go to the different uh, applications that uh, you want to see or check out. Um, 
So using uh, technology, what does it mean uh, uh, using uh, technology in these uh, rubber boot tools? Uh, one of the things that we use a lot are the mobile phones that our students have. These mobile phones are really, uh, really capable uh, machines. They know a lot, and you can use them for a lot of things. We also have uh, a couple of laptops that we bring uh, to our uh, uh, trips uh, every time, and uh, also we encourage the students themselves to bring their own laptops with them. They, they do, a lot of them do. And then we have uh, some special instruments that we use, like uh, we have a GoPro camera. This is a very small, uh, very hardy camera uh, that you can even use underwater. Uh, we have a Prea cam, uh, which is a camera uh, with a motion detector and infrared light. Uh, so you can put it out and uh, during the night if it uh, senses any motion, uh, it will record the animals uh, going by. We have weather stations uh, which uh, can measure and record the temperature, uh, the uh, air pressure, and uh, the humidity. Um, our newest asset, and uh, we haven't been using it so far because it's, it's so brand new, uh, but we plan to use it. Uh, uh, I, 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 because of that, I will not be talking about how we are, how we are using it. Is is a, a little uh, a drone, a little quadcopter that you can uh, use to uh, take pictures from uh, above. Of course, we have microscopes uh, that we use, uh, and there are a lot of analysis tools uh, for analysis of. Uh, uh, the water chemicals and uh, tools for the uh, uh, analysis of uh, 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 chlorophyll and, and uh, things like that. So these are the kind of things that uh, we are using when we are talking about uh, using technology. So first of all about the mobile phones. Uh, a lot of times uh, people do not realize how powerful a machine uh, they have uh, in their pockets or in the pockets of their students. A, a, lot, of, a lot of the students now have smartphones, and uh, uh, these smartphones have a lot of very good sensors. It's just a question of how to get out the information from it. All of these... Uh, have an accelerometer, has a barometer, has a light meter, has a sound meter. Uh, you can use it uh, uh, to calculate distances. You can use it uh, uh, to uh, make pictures or, or um, uh, record films. And uh, most of these uh, uh, have a GPS in it, uh, which means that uh, you can use it for uh, uh, positioning as well. So it's a very, very advanced tool. Uh, it knows a lot uh, that uh, really expensive data loggers would do for you, uh, and they have it in their pocket. When we are using uh, laptops, there are a lot of things that we are using them for. Uh, we are using them uh, for documentation. Uh, we are using them uh, to calculate uh, uh, especially statistics. So that is where you need uh, uh, really advanced uh, calculations, which are much easier done uh, with a computer than on paper. Uh, we are using it for video editing. Um, most of the times, Windows Movie Maker knows everything that we uh, needed or, or, or wanted to use from these uh, uh, machines. Uh, if we have uh, internet access, then uh, we can use them as an encyclopedia uh, where they can search for information and look for information. And we can also use it to run simulations. It's, uh, it's nice if, uh, if you uh, study an ecosystem 
and then uh, you have some properties of it, and then you look at the simulation that what would change if you change it in a way or uh, uh, another. So mostly these are the uh, things that we use uh, the laptops for. What you need uh, to run uh, a rubber boot school, uh, a technology enhanced rubber boot school, uh, first of all, you need power. Uh, and uh, actually, this is uh, uh, the most basic is, is on the top, and uh, then we go uh, to the uh, less important parts. So, you need power. Uh, you need extension cords. It's, uh, it's really important because. Uh, uh, they will uh, plug in their uh, devices uh, uh, a lot. And then uh, if you can have uh, internet access, that's really nice. Uh, some of the camps that we are going to have internet access, and, uh, and they have a Wi-Fi there. And uh, uh, lately, we are using uh, 3G mobile net, these little sticks. Uh, that we can take uh, with us, it's not that much of a uh, of a data uh, traffic that you are using in these camps. So even just looking at Wikipedia or uh, or uh, some other uh, websites uh, is not really eating uh, a lot of uh, traffic. Uh, of course, you have to make sure that your students are not using your mobile net to download uh, uh, movies and things like that. But for that, it is important to have, uh, in the beginning, an understanding about why we have uh, the, uh, the internet there and uh, what uh, uh, we want to use it for and how it is their own interest to use it for only the things that we agreed upon. Uh, and it's very good if you have a Wi-Fi. Uh, we, uh, we have uh, Wi-Fi routers where you can put in the mobile net stick uh, so we can broadcast the mobile net uh, uh, to a lot of devices. Uh, also, just not to be too much of a temptation, uh, what we usually do is that during uh, uh, the days, there are certain hours when they can work on the internet and uh, the, this Wi-Fi is only turned on uh, at those uh, times. So it's not uh, on during all night or, or uh, during all the time, only during the times when, when they are working uh, uh, using the internet. Also, with these routers, you have uh, the opportunity to uh, to check on the the traffic and check on the websites that they visited. Uh, actually, we are not uh, we did not use this uh, mobile app uh, uh, to give to each and every uh, smartphone that the students have, only to our own laptops. Uh, and uh, and that's how they use it. So let's talk about uh, uh, the tools that we have. I think that uh, most of the people are interested in that. What what are we using, uh, and how are we using those? Uh, one thing that you can use is turning your uh, a mobile phone into a data logger. Um, all the time. I will be mentioning uh, some uh, applications, uh, but it doesn't mean that those are the only ones that you can use for uh, for that. It doesn't mean that uh, those are the best ones. It means that those are the ones that we found and used, and they were okay. Uh, there can be better ones. Uh, there there is a lot more of these, and. Um, I, I will be also mentioning only Android and Windows uh, uh, applications. It's because most of the uh, of the devices that uh, our students have are either uh, Androids or Windows, 
we do not have a lot of iOS, so I don't have experience with iOS. Uh, still, I am sure that that if you are using the uh, a lot of the iPhones, then you can find uh, uh, applications which do this. Uh, also, uh, I uh, uh, only put in the three applications. Uh, as we tell the students, actually, uh, before starting the uh, the rubber boot school, uh, uh, in the uh, letter we gave them, uh, we give them, uh, we tell the students which are the applications that they should download to their mobile phones. Uh, so, if if I want the students to download it, then I don't want it to be a paid uh, application. So what we have here are only the, uh, the three applications. So sensor info or physics toolbox are two really nice tools. There are a lot of them. Uh, what you can uh, uh, do with them is getting the data out uh, from, the, uh, from the device, uh, like uh, the sound meter. You can get uh, the sound level. Uh, you can get the light level from the camera. Uh, you can have the accelerometer uh, uh, data. Uh, the best ones of these uh, uh, applications even let you to have these uh, in uh, uh, in a Excel file or a, or a comma separated value file uh, and download it. Uh, so you can use it to a lot of things uh, from uh, looking at a pendulum when you use a mobile phone uh, as a pendulum uh, to calculating uh, um, uh, noise levels throughout uh, a forest and things like that. The next one uh, is uh, uh, an application uh, smart tools and jack of tools that you can use to measure a lot of things. Uh, uh, the, the two things that I liked it the most are the height and distance uh, measurement tools. Uh, you can use them uh, to, uh, to measure the, the height of objects or the distance of objects. Uh, it's based on the angle of the camera, uh, how you uh, have to angle it to, to have on the, on the camera, and it calculates from that the distance. And uh, uh, also you can uh, uh, use the, uh, the level, uh, uh, the horizontal level finder from it. Uh, you can use the, uh, uh, the compass uh, uh, in these tools. So there are a lot of other options, but uh, you will see that there are uh, some projects where we uh, really use this uh, uh, height and, uh, and distance uh, uh, calculation. Uh, global positioning, uh, most of the smartphones have uh, uh, global positioning systems uh, in them. And uh, uh, most of them have maps uh, in them. Uh, my tracks, uh, is uh, used to uh, to uh, record your track, and then you can download it and put it on an online map. GPS Essentials uh, uh, does uh, uh, more or less the same. A GPS Ruler uh, is uh, used to calculate distances uh, based on uh, on uh, uh, the uh, uh, GPS data. And uh, uh, we use it to make maps. I will tell about it. Uh, Locus tree maps and trail maps are two, one for the Windows and one for the Android, uh, that I have listed here uh, because um, you can use trail maps uh, on them. Uh, here in Hungary, I don't know if you have it in, in, in other countries. I think you should. Uh, is um, in, in Hungary we have a website uh, which collects uh, uh, tracks of trails and uh, makes a nice open uh, map of it. 
So these two risk rails in the uh, forests and, and mountains uh, of the country uh, can be downloaded to your uh, mobile device. Oh, well, uh, I, I got a question if, if I can uh, share the links to the store uh, apps uh, in the chat box. Uh, the problem is that it, 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 it would be real hard for me because now I am uh, uh, having a slideshow and I can't uh, select the, uh, the uh, text maybe if we can ask Victor to do that. Uh, in the okay. end, you will get it. And, uh, and yeah, what we can do is we can search your presentation. Uh, we can put it in the, in the portal, in the Scientix portal. So I think that that will help. And then we will have, like, in the same place all the, all the, the links. links okay. And they will not have to, and they will they will be able to click. If I write it now in the chat, later on, when we will uh, put this session in the portal, you will not be able to click. So I think it's the best uh, option. Okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, these are the, uh, the ones that uh, uh, we are using uh, uh, for uh, uh, global uh, positioning. Uh, even Actually, it's, it's, it's even good uh, when you are lost in the middle of the woods uh, uh, to have these maps because they are much more detailed uh, and uh, uh, much better for tracking than uh, the uh, Google Maps or the other maps uh, that are mainly for, uh, uh, for car drivers. Treasure hunting. Uh, is one of the favorite uh, occupations of our students in uh, in these rubber boot schools. Uh, probably you have heard about uh, uh, geocaching. Uh, geocaching is a nice hobby. Uh, little treasure boxes are uh, hidden uh, somewhere uh, in Hungary, mostly in the countryside, and. Uh, the, uh, the GPS coordinates are, uh, are on uh, the website, uh, geocaching.com, or I guess every country has its own geocaching uh, website, because not all of the, all of the uh, caches are on the, uh, on the uh, geocaching.com website. And uh, uh, you can uh, uh, look for them and find this hidden treasure. Uh, the rule is that if you take something out from the box, you should put in something else. Usually these are uh, small things like Kinder surprises or things like that in, in, in the boxes. Um, why I really, really like it uh, is that there are two kind of ways that geocaching is thought about. Uh, one is more of, a, of a, a mystery or quiz type where it's not that easy to find uh, the thing. And uh, the other uh, way is a kind of a, uh, a tourist guide where uh, the caches are hidden around something interesting. And uh, uh, for instance, here in Hungary, that is the way uh, how it turned. So uh, our geo, uh, geocaches are hidden where something interesting is. This interesting can be a little pond in the middle of the forest, or it can be a nice uh, uh, rock wall or things like that, but it can also be some uh, old mill or some ruins, things like that. Uh, one of the things that I do when we are going somewhere on these rubber boot schools is I go up to the geocaching uh, uh, website, the Hungarian geocaching uh, website, and look around what are the caches uh, nearby, because those are places where our students should go. Uh, and uh, also, this is a very good uh, occupation for them. In, uh, in the higher uh, grades, uh, ninth tenth, where I said that uh, uh, we are working in this credit uh, system, 
uh, uh, they can get credits for finding uh, uh, caches, geocaches. And uh, it's amazing to see uh, what a motivation it can be for students. So students who uh, say that they are uh, too tired to walk five kilometers in the woods when it is about uh, finding the caches, uh, they don't even notice that they have walked uh, uh, 30 kilometers throughout the day to get uh, uh, five of these uh, uh, caches and they are happy coming home end of course tired. So this is uh, the thing uh, uh, that we use. Uh, and another uh, treasure hunt uh, uh, is Munzi. Munzi where there are no caches but little QR codes that you can find. And these QR codes uh, 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 you get points with. Uh, they, are, they are more in the uh, uh, urban areas, not, not out in the woods. Uh, uh, but it can be also a nice game uh, walking around and looking for them and finding the, the munzies. So, uh, and um, though using the GPS eats up a lot of battery life uh, usually. So the mobile phones are not ideal for geocaching. There are those uh, uh, tracking uh, GPSs which are much better for that, but uh, but they, they they work. You can use them, and uh, and these uh, uh, applications can be uh, uh, really helps uh, uh, help uh, can be a great help uh, for that. So uh, looking at the sky, uh, looking at the sky, uh, night or day. Uh, looking at the sky uh, at night, uh, uh, there are a lot of applications which help you uh, identifying stars. Uh, so they give you uh, a sky map, uh, the actual sky map based on your location and based uh, on the uh, date and time. So uh, a lot of our uh, uh, camps, uh, a lot of, uh, in the evenings, uh, the students identify different uh, uh, stars uh, using uh, uh, the star map. Uh, celestial camera and diopra uh, can be used uh, uh, during the daytime. They are actually sextants, so they, it's, it's, it's a kind of a digital sextant, and uh, uh, you can uh, use it to measure the angle of the sun. And uh, I will show you that there is a project that we do uh, where uh, throughout the day they have to measure the uh, height of the sun and calculate from that uh, uh, how it uh, uh, moves uh, through the sky. OK, what's this? Uh, identification of living beings can be real tough. Uh, identifying uh, uh, the uh, plants and the birds and uh, and everything that uh, that is there. Uh, uh, in in my experience, the problem is that the professional uh, identification uh, uh, books are too complex for the students. Uh, there are a lot of species in them uh, that they won't ever meet and they use uh, really minuscule differences. Uh, they are very good for a professional use, but not that good for an educational use. And uh, when I first found uh, that there are uh, different uh, uh, identifiers for birds, plants, uh, and mushrooms, actually those are the ones that I have found so far, uh, I was really, really, really happy. Uh, these work in a way that uh, uh, you uh, narrow down the characteristics, like uh, you have a plant and then you say that uh, it has a, a white flower. And then you have only the white flower uh, ones. It has five petals. Now it's uh, only the ones that are white and have five petals. 
and it has uh, uh, the um, the leaf is serrated. So then only the ones, and and that that's the way where you can narrow it down to a couple of possible plants that you have. Uh, I guess that. Uh, that you have to find, uh, especially with the plant and mushroom uh, identification ones, you have to find uh, the one fitting to your own country. Uh, I, I know there are some uh, in uh, in Hungarian, uh, some actually really good ones, uh, but uh, for plants and mushrooms. But I think that won't be a great help for you. So what I have here is a uh, uh, bird of Europe and Ornithopedia, which is also uh, uh, a bird identifier. And PlantNet, PlantNet is really interesting because PlantNet uses an image recognition uh, technique, so uh, which uh, tries to identify the plant by the uh, leaf. You make uh, a picture of the leaf to a white background, and uh, and that helps you identifying it. Uh, sometimes it works. It, it works well, for instance, with trees. Not that well with, with flowers, but, but with trees it's really okay, and it's a nice idea. Okay, some words about the project uh, that we use uh, and, uh, and that we have. Uh, uh, one of the projects uh, uh, that we have and where we use technology is uh, 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 the tree, uh, which make, means that the uh, students uh, choose a tree and then they first identify it. There they can use the, uh, uh, the, the plant net or, or any of the plant identification applications. They make pictures of it. They make pictures of the whole tree. They make pictures of the uh, of the uh, uh, leaves or the uh, flowers or fruits if they have it. Then, use, using a, a smart measure or one of the other uh, uh, measurement uh, uh, applications, they uh, calculate the height of the tree. And from that, they calculate the volume of the tree. Uh, they, they also have to uh, measure the, uh, the diameter uh, of the tree and then calculate the volume. And they even uh, can calculate, uh, uh, based on the uh, average density of wood, uh, the weight of the tree. So this is how it looks like. You can see uh, first a picture of the tree, uh, a picture of the leaf. Uh, it is a picture of where it is on the map. It is uh, uh, the picture of the uh, bark. And also uh, we use uh, an uh, uh, application called Edge Finder uh, to make uh, a picture of the bark. And uh, uh, actually with that you can have really nice uh, uh, comparisons of the different barks because uh, uh, when you only see at the edges, uh, it's much more visible what are the differences between the different types of bark. And then here is the calculated height, the diameter, and they calculated uh, uh, the volume and the mass of the tree based on it. So. Um, I, I think that you can uh, do it uh, in a lot of other ways. You can calculate the height based on uh, the shadow or, or a lot of other things. Uh, then it is a much longer uh, uh, project to do. Uh, filling out this form was less than an hour for the students. And uh, I think that it's about the same uh, or, or about a good time for what it gets to them uh, in uh, learning. Microscopic photography, uh, it's uh, one of my favorite things to do. Uh, we have a really simple uh, uh, 
student microscopes, and uh, I can tell you that the simpler the better. Because with simple student microscopes, you can simply uh, put the uh, uh, camera uh, to the uh, ocular and uh, take really nice pictures, really nice pictures of, uh, of uh, the uh, uh, things that you see there. Uh, what I like to do is getting uh, uh, samples from ponds uh, uh, and also uh, getting samples from moss. Uh, if you, uh, what, what you have to do is that you uh, uh, put the moss in water uh, for a day and then, uh, then uh, squeeze it and use the water that you squeeze out from it and uh, you have a nice chance of seeing really, uh, really wonderful rotifers and water bears, uh, tardigrada as well. It's, uh, it's really nice. Uh, and uh, and uh, making pictures of it uh, helps the students uh, to identify the parts and uh, identify the animals as well. One of the problems with, uh, with these is that they are quick. Uh, so if you can make uh, uh, pictures of them, uh, you have time to really uh, look at them. Here are some of the pictures that our students did on these field trips. This is a, a, a larva uh, found in water, and these you can see very nicely the uh, eyes and all the uh, all the uh, nerves. Uh, this is uh, the uh, uh, cut uh, of, a, of, a, of a twig, and uh, you can see uh, the uh, different types of cells in it. And this is uh, a Daphnia found in a pond, and you can also identify uh, the different parts of it. It's a Daphnia mother, actually. So, and, and these uh, pictures were made with... Uh, with uh, uh, simple uh, 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 mobile phones uh, or digital cameras. An even simpler way to do is the fold scope. The fold scope actually is not a real uh, a microscope because it has only one lens in it, so it's uh, it's actually a, a, a really, really good magnifier, but uh, I guess uh, uh, you know that uh, even uh, Leeuwenhoek's uh, so-called microscope was actually a magnifier. It had only one lens in it. So uh, the, uh, this photoscope uh, uh, is now in uh, uh, beta testing. It was invented in uh, Stanford University, and the fun thing is it is that you can fold it from paper. So you get a sheet of paper and you fold it uh, in this way. This is your uh, this is your microscope here. This little part that you have to stick in uh, where you have uh, the lens, and uh, uh, here is uh, the. Uh, object that you are viewing, and simply uh, you can put it to the light and look through it, and it's, uh, it's very nice. It, it has a, a, a magnification uh, of about uh, uh, 100 or something like that, uh, 100 times. And uh, uh, the other funny thing is that uh, you can add its little magnets to it and put uh, on your uh, uh, camera uh, I mean your mobile phone camera, and then make uh, pictures with it. Here, this uh, is uh, the end of a seed of a dandelion. You know, dandelion is that uh, uh, you can uh, blow and it uh, uh, flies away. But here you can see that the very end of the seed has these little anchors in it, so it will stick into uh, the ground. And, uh, and uh, one last thing that is really, really, really nice is that if you uh, put uh, uh, to the photoscope, not uh, 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 the camera of the mobile phone, 
about the uh, flashlight of the mobile phone. Then you can even project to the wall, and it works. It works, and they cost less than ten dollars or something like that. So they are really, uh, really good for uh, field work when you don't have to worry about it. Uh, 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 one is broken, and also it's nice that you can take pictures uh, and take it uh, with your shot. Okay, statistics. Uh, uh, I like uh, uh, ha having my students uh, an experience with uh, calculating statistics uh, and um, and uh, using uh, real life data for that. And uh, here the laptops come handy when uh, uh, when we gather data and do the analysis uh, uh, in Excel. Uh, like uh, the number of leaves uh, in different uh, uh, bushes or the size of the leaves. They measure the size of the leaves and then they, they make a histogram of it. Uh, the height of trees here, they can use a smart measure to measure the height of the trees and then uh, uh, make statistics of it. Or also, uh, uh, if there is one nearby, uh, uh, sometimes we, we have students go uh, to the cemetery and collect the data there, uh, how long people lived, and then uh, making statistics about it, or the common names, uh, which were the common names in different uh, 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 decades uh, in the village, and so on. Uh, it's, uh, it's real good that you have real data, so it's not something that you made up, and you can uh, uh, have nice uh, 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 ideas about uh, this. Measuring the 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 sun's uh, the sun's angle uh, using the digital sextant. Uh, so from uh, morning to uh, the evening, uh, on every hour on the hour, they do this measurement and collect the data, and then they uh, uh, make a diagram of it. They calculate that how many degrees per hour did it change. And then they uh, realized that the sun was the higher, uh, in the highest uh, position at 1 p.m. And uh, uh, it's very good because then I tell them that, okay, it can be because uh, uh, we learned that the sun is at the highest at noon. And it's really nice because uh, uh, some of the students uh, say that, uh, uh, okay, then, then it was a measurement mistake. Uh, sometimes they even modify the data. <laughs> and, and then I, I, I tell them that, okay, look, we have summer uh, uh, daylight savings, and because of that, noon is at 1 p.m. So this is a nice project. Making a noise map. Uh, 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 using the noise level uh, uh, measurement uh, applications, uh, uh, they can measure a lot of things. The, the noise of, uh, of uh, uh, a tree uh, when the wind is blowing, a cricket, and so on. And then uh, uh, what they uh, make is that they make a nice presentation about it uh, of the different uh, uh, noise levels. Uh, sometimes if uh, we are close to a highway or something like that with the camp, uh, we even uh, make them uh, uh, drawing a map and then shining the different noise levels, uh, the average noise levels uh, at different parts and then we see that uh, 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 how uh, the, the highway affects uh, noise. Making uh, time-lapse movies uh, can be really nice. You can do it with a, with a GoPro camera, or you can uh, do it uh, with, uh, there are a lot of applications for that for uh, smart force, uh, uh, smartphones as well. What we did was that we, we made uh, uh, a time-lapse uh, of clouds, simply putting uh, the camera uh, on a table uh, upwards and having it there for a couple of hours, and then uh, identifying the different types of clouds that we had, or 
there is that experiment that I always try to do, uh, never really succeeded, is having this caddish fly larva, uh, Trichoptera. Uh, they, they build, uh, they, they live in the water, and they build these little uh, tubes for themselves. And the thing is that if you take it off of this tube, and you put it in a, uh, in a uh, uh, place where there are only paper, uh, uh, little p pieces of paper or, or, or beads or anything like that, then it will build this tube, this housing for itself uh, using those materials. And it would be nice to have a, a, a time-lapse movie of that. Uh, I, I had to realize that, okay, the way to do it is to have a living stream system, which means that you have a box uh, with holes in it, and you put it into the uh, stream, so the river goes through it. Uh, and and that's it. Uh, I, I, I will uh, answer the questions later. Uh, First, I want to show uh, another time-lapse movie, which uh, uh, the, oh no, which the uh, students uh, uh, themselves uh, uh, made. Uh, I hope uh, you can see it. This is uh, uh, this was that they built uh, a three-dimensional map of uh, the mountains where we were. First, they identified the the levels uh, on the map, and then they uh, copied it to uh, paper, cut it out, and cut it out from cardboard, and then uh, uh, painted it, and then built uh, uh, this. Uh, this map, uh, which actually looks really, really nice and really helps them understand uh, uh, how uh, this is and uh, how, what, what is the, the uh, uh, geological uh, build-up of the mountains. Uh, here you can see how they are putting it together. And, uh, and they decided to, to document their work using a, a time-lapse video with one of the uh, smartphones that they had. So, okay. Uh, the next one, it's uh, real nice. It's called the virtual tray. Uh, the virtual tray uh, is, uh, uh, I don't know, probably you have these uh, uh, trails of learning uh, in the uh, forest or in, in uh, nature where you have a, a trail that you go by and there are these tables telling you about something there, uh, the uh, fauna, flora, geology uh, of, of the place or, or what you can see there. So what we did was that uh, uh, they first identified the trail where there were interesting things, but these interesting things can be very simple ones. It, it, it can be like uh, a place where uh, wild boars are uh, having a mud bath, and uh, or it can be uh, an ant hill or things like that. And then they did a research uh, and wrote uh, uh, about it and uh, went to the place and uh, uh, recorded a video telling about it and uh, put it together in a program called Sway. Sway is really good. Uh, because uh, uh, you can uh, you can use it uh, 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 to uh, to have something which is looks the same in uh, uh, no matter which platform you are watching it from. And here I show uh, show you one of these uh, sways that they made. This was the first stop, uh, and uh, it was that here we are, and uh, uh, here, you, 
there was a, a, a wall where the different levels of soil can be seen. And uh, here they are talking about it and, and what we see here. And they are also talking about uh, 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 the uh, geological buildup of the mountains where we are. And uh, what they did uh, in the end uh, was that uh, these sways had, uh, had uh, uh, QR codes that they put out. Okay, I, I will really uh, uh, quicken up. Uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, films that we make because it's very easy to have uh, 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 films and they can uh, edit them and uh, using for these, you can see some of it here. And one of the big things that we have is a big project is the uh, museum project. In the museum project, uh, there are uh, specialist groups like a group for geology, a group for botany, a, a group for hydrology, a group for uh, zoology, a, a group for ecology. And there is also a director of the museum. There is a financial director. They have a budget to work on. Uh, there are designers, so it looks the same. Uh, and they also have to have uh, interactive elements. Uh, and here you can see, like, for instance, this map was made for this. Uh, and uh, this is uh, the microbird, uh, uh, what they have here. And uh, this is their ecology. And they made a quiz here using uh, PowerPoint. And uh, uh, these are different parts of the, uh, of the, uh, uh, of the museum. And uh, at the end of the week, we have the great opening ceremony of the museum. Uh, OK. Just two things to show. I promise it will be quick. Uh, the uh, special tools, what, what they can be used for. For instance, uh, uh, here uh, you see uh, a GoPro camera uh, taking underwater uh, pictures from a stream and uh, uh, the, the hydrology uh, group used it to explain the life under a stream. Uh, and uh, the other that I'd like to show is uh, what the uh, the track cam, the trail cam uh, recorded. Uh, here it is, uh, and 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 it's really nice because these are the kind of animals that you don't meet usually. Uh, you learn about it that they live in the forest, but you don't meet them. And here, by, uh, by putting it at the right place, you can see that uh, there is a longer, here a wild boar is coming and looking around. Uh, yeah, it comes. And they were really amazed that, okay, that it, is, it, it lives around the camp. And, and, and here it is. So this is uh, uh, one of the uh, things that you can use these things for. Okay, uh, questions. Uh, we are we are uh, up to questions. Uh, who is the author of these project topics or particular programs? Each one teacher is still credit, or do they have like a bank of these text tasks for students? Uh, actually, uh, there there are a lot of books that you can use about. Uh, 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 field uh, uh, camps, and uh, it's easy to uh, to uh, change it in a way so uh, you use these uh, ICD tools. But uh, I, I have a colleague I, I work together with very closely, and most of these ideas are ours. So uh, 
the thing is that we really, really, really uh, easily get uh, bored doing the same thing twice. So every year we are going, we, we have just calculated that, that uh, uh, this is, uh, this was the 50th camp or something like that, 50th of this rubber boot school that we made. Uh, and we are always coming up with good new ideas because uh, otherwise we would be bored. Okay, any, any other questions? Yeah. Well, uh, using the drone, we are we are thinking about uh, uh, having pictures uh, from above and uh, identifying the diff different types of ecosystems. And uh, 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 the the thing that we were thinking about is first uh, uh, having this uh, aerial map. Uh, and then identifying the different ecosystems and then uh, uh, doing research on the different ecosystems, uh, on their diversity, uh, on, on the types of uh, plants there, and uh, uh, using the aerial map uh, uh, for that uh, to sign where uh, these are. So that is, that is the plan for now. But I, I, I have to tell you that a lot of times you have these things and uh, and you you come up with the ideas uh, in the meantime. Uh, uh, what what to use it for? Also, I I, I haven't uh, shown it, but one of the projects that we do is, uh, is uh, 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 making maps, so calculating the distances and from that uh, uh, drawing maps. Uh, we do it a lot of times, uh, even uh, with the distance meters or uh, uh, in, in, uh, in greater uh, scale uh, with, uh, uh, with uh, uh, GPS and uh, uh, using an aerial uh, photograph for that would be also good. Yes, uh, in, in my school, uh, the system is uh, uh, that from the seventh to 10th grade, we have science as a complex subject. Uh, and, uh, Excuse me, Gerli, can you, can you say it's a question? Um, I think they are doing it by private, maybe? Yeah, yeah, I think. Mm -hmm. I, I'm just I yeah, get I didn't see the the, the question. Okay. So can you so say the, it maybe? Uh, <laughs> the question is, yeah, yeah. No, now we get it. Okay. <laughs> the question is uh, 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 that it looks like uh, uh, the different subjects are connected here, and whether uh, uh, it is a goal. Yes, it is a goal. Uh, in our school, uh, from the seventh to tenth grade, the students have uh, uh, science as an integrated subject. And we have an emphasis on, uh, on uh, teaching them uh, that the scientific method is about the same in all parts of the science and that these are all connected together. So yes, uh, it is really intentional to have different subjects uh, together. Of course, uh, when you have a rubber boot school, it will be biology heavy because uh, there's life around you but you can get in a, a, some or a lot of, uh, of uh, physics and, uh, and uh, uh, geography, even chemistry there, and also a lot of engineering. I, I, I haven't told you, but, but we have engineering projects as well where uh, they have to be, because that's not so much about uh, uh, ICT, but, but we have projects where they have to build bridges or towers and, uh, and there it's, it's, it's an engineering problem. Any other question? I think we should finish very soon, but if you have the last one. This one. 
Yeah, what, what we have uh, is uh, uh, how many uh, students and teachers are involved in these rubber boot schools every year. Uh, in one school, uh, uh, one of these, we have two grades. Complicated. Uh, we have two grades. The two grades are uh, each 60 students, but uh, they are not there at the same time. There is only uh, three days when they are there together. And uh, one of the, the grades starts uh, two days before, and one of the grades uh, finishes two days after the other. And uh, uh, so we have these three days with 120 students, and we have uh, uh, we have uh, uh, 60, 60 for two, two days, and we have two science teachers there, and uh, uh, eight other teachers who just help us with uh, with uh, uh, taking the students to uh, to eat and putting them to bed and things like that. So so uh, so we are uh, 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 only uh, responsible for the uh, for the science part of it. No, it is part of the school time. Uh, uh, that's, that's the question. Uh, it's part of the school time. What we have is that uh, uh, with the ninth and tenth graders, uh, the first week of the school at the very end of August is uh, the camp that we have. And with the seventh and eighth graders, it's uh, the beginning of May. Uh, in, the, in the beginning of uh, May, we have uh, this uh, uh, maturity exam. And uh, they can't be in the school anyway, so there we are going to the to, uh, to these camps. So, so it is part of, 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 of their school time. Yeah, it is also a, a part of the curriculum. So they get grades for what they do and so on. Okay. Thank you very much. I well, I found it interesting. <laughs> Yeah, uh, well, people are saying it in the chat, but I wanted to, to thank you, Carly, again. I found it very interesting to you, um, and, uh, and I can see that the, the rest of the participants did. Uh, well, I, I know they can, uh, they will have the, the, present, the presentation and they will have the recording in the portal. And, and so they can maybe contact you if uh, they have more questions. They they can find your your email in the Scientix uh, portal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. So so well, thank you very much, everyone, for attending and for presenting. And I hope to see you in the next Scientix webinar. Bye. <laughs> Bye.